I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat. All right, we got two more tools here, and these are total bonus features for the home gym. I definitely don't believe that you are gonna be needing this. Um, this doesn't make for the essentials. This is kind of like extra if you, if you really wanna build out the best home gym possible. These might be things you wanna consider. I definitely am grateful to have them. <laughs> this is a GHD, a glue ham developer, and I would say if you're gonna have one kind of bonus piece that you're gonna to add to your home gym. I think this thing is so versatile. What you can do from abdominal to posterior chain exercises on something like this is worth it in my opinion. But what I love about this particular GHD is that it's got this adjustable foot plate. So the foot plate itself can actually adjust and you can, not only does it adjust back and forth, but it's also gonna adjust how close those pads are going to be. I like getting a really snug pad on my foot, on my shin. It's going to make a lot less work on your on your calves and your ankles while you're trying to do different tool uh, different movements on here. It's got a knee plate right here for doing glute ham raises. Um, it's super smooth. It, it slides back and forth really, really smoothly. It's got a set of wheels back there. This is also something that gets stored underneath the side of the house. So uh, I'll show you that in, in a minute, but the side of the house is protected from weather. We had that built during shelter in place. We wanted to have something like a roof over the side of our house next to our fence where we could keep a lot of the gear, kept getting it out of the rain. Um, so that's the GHD. And then this, this is a prone row. So you lay down on this guy and you can do a variety of different pulling exercises. What I do like about this is that it's got adjustable height here and adjustable height here. And so you can get a, a little bit of an angle at it. You don't have to have it completely flat. You can raise it up in the front, lower it in the back. Works great for barbell rows. It also works great for dumbbell or kettlebell rows. Um, I haven't explored a lot of other uses for it, but if you lower it all the way down, it could be another bench. Again, this is sort of a specialty piece that is not essential for the home gym. Like I said, the incline bench I've got over there, you could raise it up, lay flat on it. You could do some prone rows. So you can get a lot of mileage out of just an incline bench. You don't need to get this prone row bench, but having the seal row station is definitely a perk. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Um, let's talk about the flooring, okay? Let's talk about that grass. Okay, so if you watch my channel and you've been watching it for the last year, you've seen this patch of fake grass a lot. I am out here all the time. It's one of my favorite places to train, bring kettlebells out here, bring barbells out here, do burpees, bring the rower, bring the skier, whatever it is. I like being on this grass. It's artificial, okay, so there's no mowing, there's no upkeep that has to be done. Um, the one drawback to artificial grass like this is that in the summertime, when the sun's beating down on it, it gets pretty hot. So you can't really lay on it. Definitely uh, will push push some heat back up into you when you're out here. But for the most part, it's been awesome. It drains really easily. So when it rains, it doesn't stay wet for very long. My kids love to run around on it. Um, don't have to mow it. <laughs> and it always looks pretty nice. Um, it's pretty soft and I don't like to drop weights on it. So if I'm gonna do barbell work, for the most part, I tend to do it over there. But having this little patch of grass and having something soft like that at your home, if you're thinking about landscaping a little bit, if you're really into training, you know, it looks nice and this is really functional so you can do a lot on it. So I would encourage you to think about maybe putting in a small patch of grass. It's not the most inexpensive stuff that's out there. It definitely is uh, pricey, but it will last a long time. We've had this for almost three years and it looks pretty much like it's brand new. So that's the grass. We've got the patio. We've got the, uh, you know, the cement little uh, poured spot for the rig. And now I'll show you underneath the side of the house where the rest of the equipment lives. And then we'll take a tour of some of the recovery pieces. <laughs> Okay, welcome underneath the hood. This is the side of the house. 
and this roof that's right along here runs all the way down we did have that put in um, and it was essentially just so we could store equipment exercise equipment um, i did want to have an area that was dry i also envisioned that there being like days in the in the winter when it was raining that i'd still want to be training from home i could come under here and i laid down a little bit of rubber so that we could actually have a workout space originally i thought i'd put a squat rack against this wall but you know i realized like if it's raining i can't squat I can either go out there and just get a little wet or I can just choose something else to do for that particular day. I don't need to squat out of a rack on that, you know, on that one rainy day of the week or two rainy days in the week. Fortunately, we don't get 30 days straight of rain around here. That hasn't been the norm for quite some time. This additional uh, equipment storage that Aleco, I got from Aleco, holds everything. I mean, it got so much gear on here and I'm super, super grateful to have a lot of the new tools, plus I still kept a lot of my old tools. Some of the old tools, I like these cast iron kettlebells from Kettlebell Kings. I've been using those for a long time. I've got them all the way up to 88 pounds. They've been really great for me. They hold up, you know, they've rusted a little bit being out here. I mean, you can see some rust on these. I'm not too concerned about it, but you know, they've, they've been uh, excellent tools, training tools. And I think that if you're, uh, you know, if you're gonna build a home gym, you absolutely wanna have kettlebells in your training set. I think kettlebells probably, almost over dumbbells would be my, my preference. Why? Because pretty much everything you can do with a dumbbell, you can also do with a kettlebell, and things you can do with a kettlebell only, you can't do with a dumbbell. Swings, snatches, cleans, rotational work. So the kettlebell to me is one of the most essential tools, and that's why I got such a big uh, range of weights. I wanted to be able to have, you know, lots of weights that I could do a variety of different unilateral exercises. It's such a big part of functional bodybuilding. So getting, you know, at least maybe two to three different weight sets of kettlebells that match, right? So having pairs, I think is really uh, a useful thing to invest in if you're building out your home gym. Otherwise, um, you know, at least getting a single kettlebell of maybe one to two to three different weights would be a great place to start. I'm fortunate to have not only the cast iron ones, but back here, I've got a Leco competition kettlebells. These things uh, definitely feel different. The, the cool thing about these competition kettlebells is that they're all the exact same size. Doesn't matter the weight, they're the same size. So you start to learn how they feel in your hands and how to manipulate them. Uh, plus they look really pretty, they look really clean. And for anybody that's really into fitness like me, you know, the way things look affects the way you feel when you train. So um, additionally, I've got dumbbells and they range from anywhere from 10 up to 70 pounds in different increments. These happen to all be in kilos, which is new for me, but I got a bunch of kettle, uh, dumbbells sent to me in kilos. So I'm learning how to do some conversions. I have two different types of uh, dumbbells here. We've got these kind of traditional hex dumbbells, rubber hex dumbbells. They're really durable. They're great if you're doing things on the floor where you're doing and you don't want your dumbbell rolling on you. Um, so I've got a variety of weights there. And then I've also got these, um, these dumbbells from Aleco. They're, uh, they're, they're called the Evo dumbbell and they rotate. There's a rotating handle, so they spin, which is awesome for things like snatches, overhead, anything where I'm pulling or even doing dumbbell curls and things like that, you don't realize how much you know momentum and, and inertia is in a fixed handle. So that's been really, really f fantastic to have. Such a nice perk, okay? And if you're gonna get some dumbbells, I would just, you know, in addition to your kettlebells, pick some weights that you commonly use, right? Initially, I had a, a set of 50s, a set of 70s, a set of 30s, and a, and, a, and a set of 100s. And now I've got obviously a, a bit more of a selection, but you can upgrade that over time. I also have all of my you know, old bumper plates that I kept from my last set of equipment uh, since I upgraded to the training disc over there. I'm gonna keep these. These are just you know the cheaper um, kind of rubber uh, plates and they work terrific. If you don't wanna expend the extra money on the training disc, you can get these. They'll work just fine. I've got a variety of different uh, medicine balls up here, a couple slam balls. These things, dead weight, they just go down. Uh, these for wall balls. Um, I've got a couple heavy kettlebells, hundreds down here. This is my 150 sandbag. 
That I think is probably one of the best and cheapest training tools that you can have at home. Get a bag, go fill it with sand at the park. That thing, the, the bag itself is relatively cheap and you can get a ton of mileage out of that. Um, and then let's check out down here where we got the rest of our gear. Okay, down here at the end of the uh, side of the house, um, we've got the cardio equipment. So this all stays underneath the roof, okay, keeps it dry keeps it mainly protected. I do have to scrub them down to they do they do get dirty by being out here, um, especially when we had fires last year and there was a lot of ash in the air. It got really kind of ashy down in this area. So I had to wipe these things down, make sure they stayed clean. Probably not going to last as long as they would if they were inside my house. I have a biker as well from Concept 2, which I keep inside because I also have a little standing desk on it or a little desk on the bike that I ride and I you know, do some work on it periodically. So I like to keep that one inside, but it comes out when I'm doing workouts. A note about cardio equipment. I think having one piece of cardio equipment is definitely gonna add a lot of variety to your training. What I would encourage you to do is pick the one that you like the best. Don't pick the one that's like gonna make you suffer the most or is the best. It's like, what gets you excited to get onto the tool? The biker for me is my favorite. Second favorite is the skier. Then it comes down to like the rower and the assault bike. So if I just had to have one, I'd have a biker. If I had to have two, it'd be biker and skier, right? You can get a lot of mileage out of any of these tools. If you know how to program them into workouts, you can come check out aerobic bodybuilder stuff. You can check out a lot of the things that we do in functional bodybuilding to get some ideas. But the idea is like, what's gonna get you excited to do the training? Stick with that. Because uh, they're not inexpensive tools. They actually cost a bit of money and you want to be able to like <laughs> love what you're doing with your training. So I'm fortunate to have all four pieces of equipment. Um, I can't, if I had a treadmill back here, that'd be, that'd be sick. <laughs> so I might, uh, anybody want to send me a treadmill? I'll use it. I'll feature it. But yeah, other than that, these are other good tools to have. At least one of them. I've got a, pl uh, you know, three-way uh, plyo box back there, 20 inch, 24 inch, 30 inch. I also have that, that red thing in the back. That's actually a, a handstand walking ramp, um, which I got from Titan Fitness. They were kind enough to send me that. To be honest, I don't use that very much. Um, it's just not really part of my daily training routine. It was when I was a competitor, but my kids use it all the time. They put water on it and they use it as like a, a slide. It's freaking great. So um, that wraps it up for underneath. Let's head back out there. I'll show you the rest. We'll wrap up. Okay, thanks for joining me in the backyard tour of the gym. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, happy to show you what I get to use every single day. Again, super grateful to have this place to train. And if you ever, ever need to know anything about how to build your home gym, what's the best equipment to be using, uh, what's a must have, what's, what's something you don't need, you can ask me and uh, I'll be happy to hit you up in the comments below. If you like this video, please smash the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you can get some more stuff coming at you from functional bodybuilding, from myself, and I'd love to hear what you guys would like to see next. Take care.